This is a business of M. My name is Simba Elijah Shams. Can you welcome back to Metropole Television? In case you're joining us, you can get involved. 20, that is 20146 at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. Let's talk about emotional intelligence this morning. Now, COVID 19 has never been experienced before, except at this time, which came as a shock to many. It has altered the way we live with our families and relatives, churches going out to have fun. Everything has totally changed. Even now with the future of work, which has altered the workplace, and talking matters workplace and how it is evolving, let's see how we can prepare for changes in the workplace as well as adjust emotionally. All right, this morning we're joined by Mucha Milingo, founder and leader changemaker, PTS Africa, and an emotional intelligence coach. Mucha, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on today. All right. Happy to have you around. This word called emotional intelligence. People will know it. And, and people will, will know what it means on, on, I would say, on a light note. Let me say it on the surface. Let's define it correctly this morning. When you say emotional intelligence at the workplace, what do you mean? Emotional intelligence at the workplace is really an individual's ability to tune in to their emotions and to navigate those feelings. Emotions are an integral part of who we are. And even though we've heard it said before that when it comes to work, we must leave our emotions at the door, that is actually something that's not possible because emotions are a part of us. And so at work, emotional intelligence is about being able to tune into your emotions and use that emotional data. It's also about being able to tune into the emotions of others, which then impacts our ability to interact with and work with others well. All right, I, I hear that definition. Fantastic. So let's move away from that definition and, and put it in context, all right? How do you start achieving that emotional intelligence at work? And how do you identify somebody who's not, I would say, emotional, emotionally intelligent at the workplace? Fantastic. Thanks. So we, we describe emotional intelligence as three key things. Your ability to know yourself, which speaks to self-awareness. Your ability to choose yourself, which speaks to self-management and your ability to give yourself, which speaks to self-direction. So when we're talking about the workplace, know yourself, self-awareness is about being clear about what your emotional temperature is. It's about being tuned in to the way you are feeling, why you are feeling that way, and how your emotions can impact your behavior, which is really the key part at work, right? Because ultimately, emotions drive behavior whether we realize it or not. So knowing yourself is about understanding what that underlying emotion is and how it can potentially impact your ability to do your work, your ability to interact with your colleagues. That's the first part. Choose yourself is about self-management. It's understanding that regardless of how I feel, I have the choice on how I act. Yes, I may be annoyed because of something a colleague has said or done. An email from my manager may, you know, get my juices flowing, for example. But I have the choice, right? So self-management is about choosing. It's about making a choice on how I am going to act. Yes, emotions drive behavior. But one of the things we always say is they are not directives. I still have a choice on how I can act. And then the last part that I talked about, this idea of self-direction, at work, that means I am intentionally choosing my behavior. And I'm aligning my behavior with my ultimate purpose and my ultimate goal. I'm not allowing my emotions to uh, cause me to act willy-nilly uh, in the workplace. You asked another question, how do you know, or how can you tell someone is low in emotional intelligence well yes. if you consider those three things i've talked about self-awareness self-management self-direction they give us the basis for being able to tell someone is low in emotional intelligence a person who's low in emotional intelligence is not able to tell how they're feeling which means that their emotions drive them 
their emotions impact their behavior and they are not even aware of it. Many individuals will testify to the fact that they work with people who come into the office and when they arrive, maybe it's a boss, everyone's looking at the individual to tell, okay, hey, how are they doing today? And if they smile at you, you know today is a good day. But if they just walk past you and don't greet you, you know today is a bad day. That's the kind of person who's being impacted by their emotions, impacted by moods without actually realizing they are doing that. So that's one sign. The second sign of a low emotional intelligence is an individual who just reacts. Remember, I talked about the idea that individuals who are emotionally intelligent choose how they will you know, respond to the circumstances of life. So when we're low in EQ, we react. You know, someone sends that email, whoo, there's a quick reaction before you've even, you know, processed it. Someone said something, whoa, there's a quick reaction. Um, that is actually a sign of low emotional intelligence. What we need to learn to do instead is to respond. And then the last one is individuals who are low in emotional intelligence tend to live very much in the moment. So they don't consider the long-term impact of the choices they are making. They are not making decisions that are ultimately aligned to their purpose. Everything is about right here, right now. So those are some you know, quick signs of how you can tell if someone is, um, has emotional intelligence. Pretty much. Now, the other question somebody is going to ask you, yes, as we talk about all these characteristics and signs of really identifying the levels of emotional intelligence in your colleagues and also even your juniors as a manager, is it something that you can train somebody into realizing? And what would you say are some of these factors that would, well, the question I want to ask is, that, is it, can it be inborn, Mocha? Yeah, so, I mean, emotional intelligence is a skill, right? So what we know about skills is that individuals are born with different levels of those skills, but where you are born isn't where you need to stay, right? So, yes, um, there are those individuals who may be, for example, have a natural um, tendency to be high in empathy, right? So they, they really feel for others and they're able to put themselves in other people's shoes. That could be something someone is born with that's inherent in them, maybe because of their upbringing or their socialization. But the bottom line is it actually doesn't matter whether you were born with these emotional intelligence competencies or not, because emotional intelligence is a skill. So wherever you are on the scale, if we were to, to run an EQ assessment right now, wherever you are on the scale, it doesn't matter. You know, when you assess for emotional intelligence, it's not a pass or fail. You're assessing so that you know where you are. Then now you can figure out, okay, now that I know where I am, how can I develop? So, you know, in answer to your question, emotional intelligence is a skill. Yes, there are those who may display some EQ competencies like empathy, for example, or optimism. There are those who may display them naturally, but it doesn't matter because we can all learn how to practice emotional intelligence. Pretty much. Um, but I want to ask you again um, on exactly this type of environment. You might know, but we're saying that it's a skill, and you'll find that most of these responsibilities are actually left to the HR or I would say unit managers of the workplaces to actually make sure that their employees are at the right working mind. But now I ask you, is it, is it possible to inculcate an environment at the workplace which, whether you like it or not, is going to help you? Your employees sort of develop this skill without necessarily saying hello today we're going to we're going to train you on emotional intelligence 101 how do you react when somebody has abused you is it possible <laughs> yes it is i love that question i love that point you just made today we're going to teach you uh, emotional intelligence 101 i mean let me let me start there as i come to answer your question yeah emotional intelligence is not a training Right. So as an emotional intelligence coach, we often get clients who want us to train their teams. And one of the things that I make very clear is you don't train or you don't run a training for three hours on EQ and then walk away and say, fantastic, my people are now emotionally intelligent. <laughs> emotional intelligence is a journey. It is yes. not an event. Yes. It's a journey. And because it is a journey, then yes, you know, leaders can 
create an environment that is conducive. And, and I think what I would say is, first up, leaders themselves must practice emotional intelligence, right? Um, in order to cultivate an environment that is high in EQ, in order to, you know, help members of your team to develop emotional intelligence, you must model it first. Your team must see emotional intelligence in you. They must see that you are someone who is high in self-awareness, that you are someone who is high in self-management, that you are able to think through, think things through before you react, that you respond appropriately, that you are, you know, the kind of person who thinks about the long term when making decisions. I think that is the first and most powerful way that leaders can help their team members to develop emotional intelligence. And, and here's the thing about emotional intelligence. Research shows that organizations where leaders are higher in emotional intelligence are successful. And when I say successful, I'm talking about bottom line success, right? So I'm talking about revenue. We have seen from research that leaders who are high in emotional intelligence actually you know, get those bottom line, hard, tangible, financial results. And so for leaders, the key is just start with yourself before you think about a training. Start with you. Are you emotionally intelligent? Are you high in self-awareness, like I said? Are you um, practicing and, and exercising empathy, right? Because at the end of the day, it starts with the leader. And if the leader then demonstrates these competencies, you will find that those you're working with, the rest of the team, will actually start to manifest some of that behavior. And then that means when you do bring in the training, it makes more sense. Because it makes no sense, to be honest, to train a team to be high in emotional intelligence when they are led by a leader who is lacking in the very same skill. Pretty much. And I want to point you out on exactly what happens at the corporate level, Musha, when it comes to dealing with issues that will lead to conflict, which would sort of um, ask somebody to use the emotional intelligence skills to actually get beyond that. You find that most corporates have tools and procedures on of dealing with issues. Somebody abuses you, this is exactly what it is that you're supposed to do. If you have a conflict, this is exactly what it is that you're supposed to do. Does that act as a proper substitute to emotional intelligence? Because any organization will tell you, well, we have ways in which we handle our issues, so we don't anticipate that we'll get into those, those sort of problems. You know, the challenge is this. Yes. We somehow believe that we are rational entirely as human beings. And yet, we know from our research that we are equally emotional. And actually, the emotional part of the brain is powerful enough to override rational thinking. Yes. So yes, there may be processes and procedures, and those are great. Those are important. But we're talking about a human being here. We're talking about a human being who feels and whereas we may have been told to leave our emotions at the door, it's not something that's actually humanly possible to do. So before I fill in that form and send it to HR outlining the way that I feel I have been abused or, you know, outlining the conflict I'm navigating, I have felt as a person, right? Yes. And because of that feeling that I have felt, I have possibly acted. And when I've acted, I have potentially escalated the issue beyond where it needed to go. And so emotional intelligence actually helps us to de-escalate issues. When I am high in emotional intelligence, I am better able to de-escalate issues, which means that some of the conflict that we see in work could actually be avoided. Some of the issues that we see that become escalated, um, you know, as far as following a certain process or procedure could actually have been avoided if individuals were just taught some key principles of managing and navigating their emotions. Pretty much. Um, Musha, if you may allow me, because one of our watchers is introducing another area when it comes to this discussion. She's called Whisper. She's asking, 
How does someone work on improving their emotional intelligence after realizing that naturally you might be a low thinker? Is that we have something like low thinking and emotional intelligence? Is, would, you, would you respond to her? I think um, I would say two things. So the first thing that I would say is this, that there is no known correlation between one's IQ and one's EQ. So there is no correlation. It is not uh, the case that because someone is low in IQ, they're going to be low in EQ. Yes. Your emotional intelligence levels have actually got nothing to do with your intelligence level. So that's the first thing I would say. Remember, emotional intelligence is a skill. All it takes is for someone to firstly understand that they are low in emotional intelligence, right? So self-awareness is important. You can't navigate, you can't uh, improve, you can't build on something if you don't know that you need to build on it. Yes. So the key here is identifying that you are perhaps low in emotional intelligence and then taking some steps intentionally practicing to develop greater emotional intelligence. So what are some of those steps that we can take? The first one, remember, we're talking about self-awareness. And, and I truly believe that self-awareness is a superpower. And anyone who wants to practice greater emotional intelligence should just start with that. Start with being self-aware. Start with understanding what your emotional temperature is. Start with understanding what your triggers are. What pushes your button? Start with understanding what are your strengths and your weaknesses. Start with doing a self audit. If you want to go deeper with that audit, you can also reach out to your colleagues at work and ask them this really powerful question. What is it that you see in me that you think is holding me back in my career? What is it that you see in me that you think is holding me back in my career? And we encourage, you know, seeking feedback because there are parts of you that you may not see. There are things that you do, things that you say, that you may not realize that you do and say. So the first step is really invest in self-awareness. You know, I, I, I really believe that if an individual only ever focused on that, they would see such a big difference because just knowing makes all the difference. But now knowing is not enough, right? So now that I know that these are my triggers, the second step to really practice emotional intelligence is to understand the power of pause. Now, what do I mean by that? Remember I said earlier, the emotional part of the brain is powerful enough to override rational thinking, which is why we can find ourselves doing something or saying something that actually makes no sense. Right. When you when you think about it later, you wonder, oh, my goodness, you know, had I lost my mind in that moment. And so this is why pausing is powerful. When you start to feel your emotional temperature rising, when you start to feel hot and bothered, just pause. That saying count to 10 is actually scientific because when you do pause, and you count to 10, you allow your emotional temperature to cool down. You allow those intense feelings to dissipate. At its core, emotions are chemicals that course through our body. They are chemicals released by the emotional part of the brain. So what you want to do is allow the intensity of the moment to just relax a little, and then you respond rather than reacting. And so the second tip I would give anyone who's looking to, you know, practice emotional intelligence is practice pausing. There are very few instances at work that actually require you to respond immediately. Very few. As a matter of fact, there are very many opportunities we have to just take a breath, even count to three. If you think 10 is too much, just count to three. <laughs> take a breath and then respond rather than reacting yes so that's the second tip that i would give so develop self-awareness invest in understanding yourself and then number two practice pausing before you react just hold yourself back and actually respond pretty much now just the last uh question about this this morning which is that well i mean 
you might have the skill and and but there are situations and i want to put you in in the limelight of exactly what is happening now or what has happened to so many people now the covid 19 pandemic which is going to throw you off balance you're going through salary cuts you're going through you're going through layoffs you're, you're going through unpaid leaves and all that does does that introduce you to a different realm if i may say that this morning where to some level even your emotional intelligence gets tested and how do you react on the extreme we might have different levels on the extreme because yes at work you're working with people who also know very well that they can go to a certain limit fine which introduces some balance but is there a level where you can use it and what do you do at a point now you know we, we're going through unprecedented times yes. um you know we are going through unprecedented times people are navigating situations scenarios that we have never seen in our lifetime and this pandemic has influenced us in ways that we could never have imagined emotional intelligence isn't going to be you know the be all and end all it's not going to it's not a quick fix right it's not going to solve some of the serious challenges that we have. Emotional intelligence is just a tool to help us now navigate those waters, those choppy waters that we find ourselves in. Emotional intelligence is how we really get through this season. I have been working in this space of EQ for over, um, for about five years now. And, and one of the things that I've been saying over the last seven months is that if you ever thought emotional intelligence was a nice to have, COVID has demonstrated that it is actually an essential skill. We have, even before COVID, been facing you know, severe emotional challenges. Even before COVID, we were finding more and more incidences of uh, mental illness and, and mental health challenges at work. Even before COVID, we were struggling. And then COVID came along and, and it seems as though um, our lives have been appended. Emotional intelligence is the skill that just helps you to make sense of what it is you're going through and to be able to make choices about what it is you're going through. Emotional intelligence itself is made up of a number of competencies. One of the, there, there are two competencies that I feel, you know, right now as we're navigating um, this season that have become so useful to help us get through what we're going through. And one of those competencies is the competency of optimism. Optimism is, you know, being able to, to see options even when things are at their most challenging. Optimism isn't putting on a, a happy face and pretending everything is going to be all right. Optimism is being able to say, wow, things suck. I'm, I'm at the lowest I have ever been. But knowing somehow there is an option, somehow I can find options. And, you know, one of the ways that we can leverage emotional intelligence is leveraging skills like optimism and reminding ourselves that, yes, things are tough, but it will not last forever, right? At the end of the day, there will be an end to this battering that we are undergoing. And at the end of the day, there is still something that we can do. You know, we talk about the three P's of optimism. It's not lasting forever, so that's permanence. It's not encompassing everything so that's what we call this idea of pervasiveness somehow when we are under stress we begin to feel that we are defined by this stress emotional intelligence helps us to take a step back and say yes it's true this pandemic has bled over into very many parts of my life but i am not defined by it i'm not defined by the uh, setbacks that i have uh, gone through as a result of this pandemic. I'm not defined by the, the challenges I'm facing as a result of this pandemic. And, and the last P is this idea of personalization that if I, there is something I can still do about it, right? I'm not just at the mercy of the pandemic. So the reality is this, as I said, this has been unprecedented and it has changed our lives in ways that we could never have imagined. Emotional intelligence helps us 
to make sense of it all. Helps us to focus on what we can do about it rather than feeling as though we are just helpless rafts that are being thrown around by the winds and the waves. Pretty much, Mocha. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. You have been quite a fantastic guest to open the show for, for us this morning as well.